Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. Here's Powell on the return. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Falcons take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. Atlanta now coming out on the field. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try and figure out what is working, and call more of that. Now this one into the hands of the tight end, Hayden Hurst. And they're able to get this one across the 35. First down yardage on the first play of the drive. Give him 14. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus. And indeed, he gets enough for the first down. Throwing now, Ryan on first down. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And they bring him to the ground just shy of midfield. It's a gain of 11, and the Falcons pick up the first. Well, maybe this offense has learned something from watching their counterparts work. I'm wondering if their coaching staff said, let's do what they've been doing the entire game because that's worked well. This offense, they have not looked particularly good all game long, but a nice throw there for a good game and a first down. They go with Gurley on first down, but he goes nowhere. They bottle him up for a loss of a couple. This defense is just flat getting after it. They have not given up much of anything in the run game. Case in point right there. At the 47-yard line. Second and 12. They'll stick to the ground game with Gurley. And they'll get him down as he's inside the 40. Give him 14 on that one and a first down. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected, but that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. From the gun, it's Ryan. And he cannot avoid the pressure as the Washington pass rush gets home. Montez Sweat picks up his second sack of the afternoon. He's been a tough one for this offensive line. It appears almost like they've been on roller skates this entire game, the way they've been pushed around. Six sacks given up in this one. So that complicates things a bit here. 18 yards to go now on second down. Here comes carry number 10 for Gurley. And boy, this burgundy and gold defense charged up now. They stop him behind the line again. Just a one-yard loss that time, but that's not what they needed. Now they're dealing with a third and long. I see a shake of the head as he gets up, and you've got to imagine he's thinking, guys, you got to help me out. He's hoping his team can read his thoughts because he definitely needs some assistance. Needs something from deep in the bag of tricks here after first and second down went backwards. It's third and very long. And that is incomplete. We saw this a lot in the first half, and it continues. These receivers just not able to get much separation. So that means they have to win the 50-50 balls. They've got to go up with the defender and find a way to start coming down with them. And this time, contact and another incomplete pass. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on here to punt it away. 
And the punt over the side in the air, and the spot will be inside the 35. At their own 34 yard There again is the running back as he trots onto the field. He's been a good workhorse. I know we use the word workhorse a lot, but he's been a good workhorse for him in this one. No doubt about it, and there's nothing wrong with that. That's what you're looking for if you're a back, because that means everything's coming together for you. The big guys up front have created space. You've run through it. You've probably got some help even from the wide receivers who want to catch passes as opposed to block, but they're helping out too. Yeah, everyone's pitching in. He's had a good game. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. Well, that was one of the few times they've been able to contain him thus far. He's over 100 yards for the game, but he lost a bit off his total on that carry. After the loss to start out, here's second and 11. Out of the gun, Smith. Oh, look at Thomas, wide open. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 19 yards to pick up there, move the chains. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. First and 10, and they've got three tight ends out there. A jumbo package look. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he's going to get this one down near the 45-yard line. You give him three on first down, it'll set up a second and seven. Well, from an offensive perspective, that was a tough run because he only picked up three yards. But let's flip it over to the defensive side. They now have the advantage. Three three-yard gains, that means they're punting the ball likely on fourth down. That's what you're looking for when you're playing defense. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Operating from the gun, Smith. Throw left side complete. It's Sims. That catch good for five. It's third down. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. short to give to the tight end and yeah, boy he is very close to a first down but from where they're spotting that football he's going to be a foot or so short i bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call and they got awfully close now we're at fourth and inches i wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here and maybe want to go pick it up here not budging they're gonna fight for it on fourth and inches they'll try and run for it and he's gonna have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30 yard line and the drive stays in motion with a nice eight yard pickup on fourth the type of game that he's having running the football there was no doubt who they were giving the ball to so why didn't they just go ahead and go after him on defense, right? Yeah. If, if you know, on it, right? You know he's having that type of a game. Who else would you expect to get the football? I would have taken my chances and sold out defensively to stop him. And if anyone else picks it up, I tip my cap to him. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. From the gun, Smith. 
Over the middle complete. It's Sims. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. 13 yards there at a Washington first. If anyone thinks they're just going to tuck their horns in and pull back off the throttle a little bit, you can forget it. Even with this big third quarter lead, I think this team's going to continue to take their shots downfield. And there's another completion. Check it back. Now a handoff here to his running back. And not able to break away this time as they're going to stop him right around the line of scrimmage. No call and no gain on the play, and it'll be second down. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. In the third quarter here in D.C., a second and ten upcoming. Now it's Smith. Now he's forced out left. Six yards there off the scramble, but it'll still leave him with a third down. It's a gain of six. Makes it third and four. <laughs> Operating from the gun. Smith. This will be caught at about the six. That's good. The gain of five that time gives him the conversion and makes it first and goal. Well, they've had a great, impressive drive going here, and that pickup ensures the drive continues. And not only do you continue the drive, which is demoralizing for the guys on the defense side of the ball right now, but you make your own defense happy. They're able to get a little more rest over on the sidelines while this one continues downfield. And they've got three tight ends here on first and goal to add some extra mass. Going to give this time to the tailback. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. Call that a gain of five as the clock ticks inside of two minutes to go now in the third. Looks to me like maybe there's a little attrition setting in with this drive. Because when you see that type of a run, I get the feeling the defense getting a little bit tired. And that's the last thing they need, especially when they look up at the scoreboard. Second down and goal. Smith. Oh, it's out. Smith lost it. Matt Ryan, sack. A fumble. Much like a running back going through the line, quarterbacks have to be aware of protecting the football as well. He left it exposed that time, wound up having it knocked free, but fortunately had an alert teammate who was able to get it. So crisis averted, but now facing third and goal. Hey, check Mike 46. Check Mike 46. Now Smith toward the end zone, but that's going to wind up incomplete. Pass thrown away and incomplete. So it's been a long drive. They've held the ball for quite a while. Now what do you do here? Well, to me, at this stage after this drive, this close to the goal line, three points would be a letdown. I'm going for it here. So now on fourth down, Washington will hand things over to their kicker, Dustin Hopkins. From the left hash, a chip shot here. Hopkins' kick is good. And that will just add three more to a lead that's already out of hand. Falcons three. A good drive gets him inside the five, but they could not punch it in. And credit the defense, too. Make sure that that happens because that's the old bend but don't break approach. Make sure they contain them when they absolutely had to and force the field goal attempt that went through. is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here's Powell on the return. And able to get this out to the 25. Falcons take over first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. 
Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. They've got to dig down deep. I mean, they need something right now, really anything to cling on to. This offense has struggled. Partner, join me in a walk to their locker room at the half, okay? Because I think what we would have seen is an offensive coordinator and his, and his assistant coaches getting together with all their positions, then coming together as a group, going over adjustments, and then the head coach coming in and just screaming, wake up. Yeah. Let's get moving, guys. I'm kind of glad we weren't in there at halftime, actually. <laughs> I mean, you think you might have turned it on us, too? Yeah, but right now, whatever was said hasn't been working. They'll break the huddle, come up on second and eight at the 27-yard line. From the shotgun, Ryan. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Falcon, first down. That's the end of the third quarter. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. From the gun, Ryan. And a quick throw here, that's complete. And this winds up a gain of four to the 41. They'll contain him to just four, second down. One thing I think that's safe to say defensively, the tackling's been really good. And because of that, it's been very, very hard for them to move the ball because you're not getting the benefits of run after catch. They're tackling them almost on the spot. That means you have to run extra plays, harder to move it. Throwing again on second down. Ryan, the intended target was Calvin Ridley, and it's third down. At this point in the game, they've got to continue to try anything they can. They're still working at it, even though this one feels like a lost cause. The Falcons on third down. They're hitting at just 30%, three for 10. This will be third and six. To throw again is Ryan. And the Washington pressure gets to him. He will go down. Matthew Ioannidis able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. And now they're going to go for it. This isn't fourth and inches. This is fourth and 14. The Falcons will go for it. It's Ryan. That's going to be knocked away and incomplete. The Falcons go for it, but it doesn't work out. And Washington will take control of the football in great field position. Well, you feel the excitement build on those fourth down plays. Defense has to stay out there, but for the offense, when that thing doesn't work out, such disappointment. It can absolutely be a deflator, but how about the defensive guys? If they stop you on fourth down, they are absolutely elevated going to their bench. They're elevated now. Big stop on fourth down. And he'll give it here to his running back. A gain of three, second down. Give credit to the defense for stringing that play out, and they gave up no cutback angle. You know he was trying to dart through. No place for him to go. A nice job there, only giving up a three-yard gain. Now a handoff here to his running back. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 23. Eight yards on the pick up there and it moves the sticks. Oh, that's one to warm the hearts of all those old school football players, isn't it? Tough, hard, gritty run. Got behind his pads, bowled over a few people. Look at that one, right up the gut. Saw it through three quarters, no reason to lighten up now. And to give this time to the tailback. Up from his linebacker spot, Deion Jones making the play. 
vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him, diagnose a play, and then go make it and finish it, that's when the great ones know that they have the goods. And he'll give it here to his running back. Give him three yards, and now they're left needing a conversion here on third and six. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? Washington on third down. They've had plenty of success. Eight conversions, looking for a ninth. This will be third and six. And he'll work free from one tackle, but that's about all as he's taken down. Just a one-yard pickup there, and it'll be fourth down. Ladies and gentlemen, that is a force of nature at the defensive tackle position. Yes, he's as big as they come, but still plenty agile. He's able to make a nice play there to small up the ball carrier. So out comes a field goal team now for the second time here today. From the left hash, this from 34. And Hopkins' kick is good. And they're well on their way now as the lead grows even larger. 48, Falcons 3. So it's three more points, and that widens this thing out even further here in the fourth. And you know in this league, you can never have enough points, but this widens it out, as you said, and now it's all about ball control, isn't it? The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will make it into the end zone. And it'll come out to the 25 as he will not attempt to return. Here comes the Falcon offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time, went for it on fourth, didn't get it. See if they can pick themselves up off the mat and do better this go around. Sometimes I have this vision of coaches writing notes to themselves before a game. And sometimes that note says, be aggressive, stay aggressive. Maybe that's what we saw in the last possession. Yeah, they were very aggressive. This time, will it result in points? We'll find out. And he was hit as he threw it there, and it forces it incomplete. I'll tell you what, partner, after he ices down, he's going to be a nice, long, soak in a hot tub after this one. He's been under duress the entire game. And once again, hit as he throws. Fortunate that one wound up incomplete. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again, Ryan. He'll drop this underneath to Gurley. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. The Falcons on third down. They've had a lot of chances, but not much success, converting only three times. This is third and eight. And that is incomplete. Oh, he had a defender right there with him to force that to the ground. And fourth down now coming up. He did a fine job there of not hitting it before the ball arrived. And I've got to tell you, you can often mistime that play because of the angles of approach. When you're going to get him, sometimes you panic as well and think, I've got to be there right now. Instead, in this case, timed it perfectly and knocked it free. Thirty-nine yards on the punt. Give him just one yard on the return. At their own thirty-one. Now we get another look at Washington on offense. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles. What does the handbook say that we we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance. 
where they took control of this game, how they've managed to keep control of this game, and then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. So fourth quarter, a nice run there to start this drive. Charles, what do you think the split will be here between run and pass? Well, partner, I think it'll lean towards the run, but this is also not a time where you just totally do that. You still have to possess the ball, move the sticks, and keep the clock moving as well. So they'll run their offense, but yeah, when they have a chance to run it, they'll do that a little bit more. Call that a loss of a yard, and things get a little more difficult here, third and five. On this day, the ground has been his, but at least on that individual play, we just saw the defense finally with a win. Yeah, they finally got one, and that's a win for them, but all game long, he's seen the holes, and they've been huge for him. Kind of like a baseball hitter in the zone. The ball seems bigger, and he's just whacking it. These guys, they've got it going today. Five men in the secondary now for the Falcons on third down. From the shotgun now, here's an inside give. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. They get the first. The decision to run on third medium winds up being a good one. Brendan, every great running backs coach that I've talked with has always talked about when you have great vision, you're not consciously thinking about your cuts and your moves. You're just doing them. And I think that's what we're seeing tonight. He's about run them into submission. Uh, I you took the words right out of my mouth. I was just going to use that phrase. He has run them into submission. Wave the white flag. Three tight ends in the ball game here on first and ten. Now a handoff here to his running back. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. Five yards is the tally on first down. That brings up second and five. Hey, when you get good yardage like that on first down, it really does a whole lot of good for your entire offense. But I love the way he's finishing those runs. At the end of things, he's making sure he gets just a little bit extra. And I give this time to the tailback. Give him four on the carry, and it'll make this a third and about two. When you find that kind of yardage, you couldn't be more confident as a ball carrier. And guess what? You're going to go back and tell your offensive coordinator, I'd like to keep carrying it, thank you. Now it's Smith off the bootleg. Catch here, left side, Thomas. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. They get six on the pickup there as the drive will continue. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down, went his way, it worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Running the sweep with McLaurin. Foyasade Aluakon made the tackle there from his safety position. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Now a second down and six. And he'll give it here to his running back. And pretty good running as he'll be close to a first down at the Falcons 28. It's a seven yard gain there and it's good enough to move the chains. Well, we're beyond the tone setting right now. This guy's been the bell cow all day and he'll continue to rely on him to move the chains, drain the clock and lead his team. Running game working, they'll stick with it on first down. The running credit him with a one yard gain there to make it second and nine. Run blitz there defensively, something we might see more of here in the fourth quarter. I think we'll see a lot of it. And the difference between that and a pass blitz, pass blitz, you're just trying to get to the quarterback. You're trying to scheme someone open who will get to the QB and make sure he gets on the ground. In a run blitz, you're actually trying to cover up gaps, trying to cover up holes so they can't run the football. And he stopped immediately there. 
No gain on the play there, so that doesn't help. Now they're looking up at a third and nine situation. Third down and They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL, and he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time, so make sure you get in shape. Smith. Off the bootleg. And he takes a shot on the release as this will be incomplete. So two third down conversions on this drive, but not able to get a third. And now they deal with fourth down. Well, we always talk about how you've got to be quick when you go through your progressions. And here's another prime example. Trying to look downfield. He's standing in the pocket, but just couldn't find anyone open, could he? No, not enough time. They hit him and force that incompletion. So now here comes the field goal team for the third time today. This from 44 yards out, left hash. Hopkins' kick is good. And they're sitting pretty now as the lead grows even further. Washington 51, Hopkins 3. So a dozen plays on that drive CD, but in the end, it yields just the three points. Well, they were able to keep the defense on the field for a long time, but let's be honest about it. That's about as unsatisfying a drive as you're going to get. 12 plays and you only get three points out of it. Not quite the ending they were looking for. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Now this will make it into the end zone, and he'll just sit on this one as their drive will start at the 25. Matt Ryan and the Falcon offense set to get going again. And this defense, they came prepared. He's probably going to be seeing them in his sleep if they don't fix things quickly. And that's not exactly what he wants to see in his post-game slumber. So they've got to figure out a way to slow things down a little bit. Some screen passes, some draws, anything to make the defensive front hesitate a little bit. Think on their way back to the quarterback, maybe even a quarterback draw, some type of tendency breaker to change things up. Exactly, whatever the case, something to mix it up here. He'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Looking to throw again on second down, Ryan. Another pass attempt, another incompletion. You, you figure defensively, you're in the fourth quarter here, you've held the team under 100 yards passing. You've done your job. Especially in today's NFL, which is truly a pass-first league. Now they face a third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Operating from the gun, Ryan. A very quick pass to Ridley. And he is going to have a Falcons first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. 14 yards there and a Falcon first down. That was a nicely run slant route. And what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps and cuts towards the middle of the field. And now what he's trying to do is use his body to keep the defender away from the football and give the quarterback a really nice target. Now Ryan on first down. And the coverage terrific there as that's knocked down and incomplete. And give credit to Reuben Foster, the linebacker, getting a hand in to disrupt. And that's a nice job there because you've got to play the ball, not the man winning coverage. That'll keep you away from a lot of needless penalties. And he's able to knock that one away. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and 10. Throwing again, Ryan. The left side completion to Jones. Ryan and he'll get it into enemy territory just across midfield at the 49. Five, five yards, now it's third and five. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helps to have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. The last play on the completion got him half of what they needed. Now here's a tough third and five. 
Got a man, and he hits him in stride. Boy, nothing doing on that one, and it'll be fourth down. No gain on the play. It's now fourth down. Just two minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter of what has been a one-sided affair. So it's Falcon football as we welcome you back. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And here's Hoff Richter now, the punter, as he sends this one away. Washington will take over first and 10 at their own 24-yard line. A look at Washington as they come onto the field. And a few kneel downs should just about do it. Now, defensively, they do have all three timeouts, but very little reason to use them at this point. They'll try and run some clock here as they keep it on the ground. And I think he's going to go. They're not going to get him. The 20, 10, and he will get into the end zone. It's another touchdown. This thing is ugly. Even though they've got this big advantage, Charles, they are not taking their foot off the gas pedal right now. Well, I think what we're seeing is the result of all their great preparation and great practice time during the week. And even though it seems like this is a great chance to pull people back and maybe, you know, not try and score a few more times, they don't want to do that. I think they're enjoying what they're seeing, the collective effort, and they want to play it all the way out. 